essential elements of the Day of the Dead altar uh, include, uh, first of all, uh, flowers, and especially uh, flowers that actually are or imitate uh, what's known as uh, sempasochil or marigolds. Uh, sempasochil flowers, uh, that's a Nahuatl word that means 20 flower or the complete flower, uh, are used throughout uh, Mesoamerica to uh, day the dead altars to, to, to signal to the dead to come back to this location. Uh, in some parts of Mesoamerica, it's believed that the dead are blind, but they can still smell. And they smell their way back uh, to the altar that has been constructed in their honor. Uh, the second part of a day of the dead altar that's very typical uh, is food, uh, the food for the dead. Here you see fruit, uh, or what is known also as bread of the dead. And here uh, the artist has uh, made a clay representation of bread of the dead. Um, typically what you do is uh, when you build a home altar uh, for uh, deceased family members, is you put on the altar the food that the, or the drinks that the deceased person liked in life. So for instance, over here in the corner, uh, you have some Shiva uh, Regal, uh, which apparently uh, one of the people who's commemorated here uh, liked when he was alive. So you might find Snickers bars or certain types of fruit or uh, somebody's favorite smokes uh, are on Day of the Dead altars. Uh, also, typically you'll have skulls. You'll have different types of skulls. Uh, you'll have uh, candy skulls, but you may also just have uh, different types of artistic uh, images of skulls like you see here. And notice that this skull has a flower on the top because this represents what is the meaning of the skull. The skull is actually understood to be a seed, uh, something that uh, leads to flowers or new life. Uh, so bones are in Mesoamerican mythology uh, are compared to, to seeds that then bring new life. And it's just like the idea of bringing the dead back from the underworld or the world that they're in to the level of the earth to spend some time with family members. Um, there's still another element that's typical in Day of the Dead Altars is what's called papel picado. And you can see that this very fragile, delicate paper uh, has, been, um, has been carved out, chiseled out, or in this case stamped out, to represent uh, there are two skulls talking to one another. It looks like one of them has maybe a smoking something. Uh, and these represent uh, the scenes uh, of, of the dead who are celebrating, who are present. Uh, and sometimes uh, you have uh, these uh, papel picados, a sense of humor. They show someone riding a bicycle taking the, the bread to the market. Uh, and they show Don Quixote, as you have here an example of Don Quixote. Uh, who is on a skeleton horse and himself a skeleton riding through the battle uh, from uh, uh, Cervantes' favorite story. Uh, and uh, uh, you also have artistic pieces. For instance, uh, up here uh, in the corner you see uh, a tree of life, but it's been turned into, uh, over on the other side, an example of the tree of life with a skeleton in the middle. Again, this idea of flowers and bones representing the duality of life and death. And here you see, for instance, a wedding ceremony where you have the matrimonial couple on the top step, uh, but they're already skeletons. Uh, and instead of the gifts uh, that surround them here, you see a sugar skeleton. And then down below, there's the musical group, the conjunto. Uh, they're also skeletons. Uh, and so they're making, the, making light of life and light of death at the same time. So there's always a question of what are the sources, the origins of uh, the Dia de los Muertos. Uh, some people uh, like to uh, give a lot of credit to the Catholic Church that comes into Mexico and brings a ritual tradition associated with uh, the remembrance of all souls and uh, all saints. Uh, and that certainly has a, an influence in Dia de los Muertos. Uh, others will highlight the indigenous contributions to this ritual uh, calendrical ceremony. And the truth is, is that these uh, elements, both Catholic and indigenous, are mixed in different uh, degrees of emphasis depending on where you are. Uh, here's a good example. Here uh, you have uh, a, a little shrine uh, associated with a cemetery um, for someone deceased. There's the cross. Uh, but in front of the cross and throughout, you have Day of the Dead symbolism. You have uh, uh, this, uh, this angel that is a skeleton. Uh, you have this giant uh, calavera who has a cross on his head. 
And then you have these, uh, these Diablos who are also associated with Day of the Dead uh, right there in front of what looks like a very Catholic symbol. This type of uh, combination, this kind of transculturation means that Day of the Dead uh, bridges between different elements, different cultural traditions in Mesoamerica. Yes, it's very important to remember that Day of the Dead is, is not a frightening event. Um, it's not the idea of being haunted. It's really the idea of family and community coming together to remember the ancestors who've given us life, draw them closer, uh, and also, you know, face the destiny that all of us, all of us are going to meet, which is an afterlife, hopefully in the lives and the memories of our descendants.